In other international news, if you're an Israeli immigrant or emigrant, listen up, because this next story concerns you. A new bill being pushed in the Knesset now looking to ease the Israeli tax burden on foreign holdings. Joining us with the details is author of the bill and Knesset member with the Blue and White Party, Michal kotler Wunsch. Knesset member, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, the bill is extremely important, both for Olim um, um, immigrants that are living in Israel but working abroad, um, and beyond that, prospective um, new immigrants. And I'd say, in addition, returning Israelis, um, of which many, and we hear all the time about the um, uh, increased interest in the possibility of returning to Israel from all over the world or making Aliyah, immigrating to Israel from all over the world. Uh, the importance of the bill, I would say, alongside uh, the coronavirus challenge is to identify the opportunity of uh, creating or reducing the barriers uh, for preventing people from emigrating to Israel or those living here already and having to pay this double social security um, um, payment to countries with which Israel does not have yeah, a so treaty so regulating gonna, that. So that's exactly what I was going to ask. You know, what, what is the current code and what is your bill looking to do? So really, it's just to equalize uh, uh, those in the in the situation with which um, they are in, uh, 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 obligated to pay double the tax, both in their home countries, or rather Israel being their home country, but both in the country in which they work and in their home country being Israel. And with most countries, or with many countries, the state of Israel does have uh, binational agreements, treaties that regulate that overlap. Uh, with countries such as the United States, the state of Israel does not have such a treaty, nor will it have such a treaty. And therefore, uh, it really is a matter of equalizing um, uh, the, the, the payment due by by those that happen to be working in the United States and living in Israel, as opposed to, let's say, working in Canada and living in Israel. So and having to pay... Yeah. No, so realistically, Sorry. like, how many people are, are standing to benefit from this? So that's a really hard estimate, right? So we, we know that there are hundreds of such people currently in the state of Israel, and it's also a matter of how much they're paying. And there are extraordinary amounts of money, actually. So for each of those individuals, it really is a very heavy burden. We don't know how many of those um, um, that would be moving to Israel have uh, actually not done so because they're afraid to lose their livelihood or have to pay double the payments. And we don't know how many of the returning Israelis or Israelis living abroad currently this would enable to consider moving to Israel or returning to Israel um, if they were to be assured that they wouldn't be in this predicament, which is an unfair predicament, really. And it's just, as I said, equalizing the level of payments of all other um, uh, employees of all other companies of all over the world, other than um, the company, uh, sorry, the countries with which we do not have a treaty regulating this double payment. So now I, I understand that Yesh former Yeshatid Knesset member Dov Lipman actually tried to pass a similar bill but was not successful. Why does this bill stand a better chance, or does it? Uh, so hopefully it does. Um, it's, as I said, you know, being introduced and has to go through the legislative process. It's also a matter of the, you know, longevity of this Knesset, which uh, every day seems, you know, a little precarious. But I'd say the following. If we manage to push it through to the first reading and it's been exempt of, um, and it has been exempted actually of the 45 days in which it has, has to, you know, remain, uh, you know, basically tabled. Um, the fact that it's been exempt of that means that as soon as uh, the um, minister, the ministers actually gather, the legislative um, uh, committee of ministers gathers, uh, then it can actually be pushed forward to the first reading of the bill. And once it has reached that level of first reading, then it's very important to um, realize that uh, even if in such occasion that we don't look forward to, but if the Knesset does collapse, then it would be able to continue from that stage. So the second and third reading um, would be much, much simpler to push through in the next Knesset. Wow. All right, well, Knesset member Michal kotler wunsch good luck with this bill. I think a lot of people are, are crossing their fingers. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me.